Christ. Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, Seven Rings is going to be taking us to Dragonshire. So this is the veteran heroic team up against some folks who have shot up in the divisions from last season. We'll see how things go. We are 8 out of 10 when it comes to players. We should be starting just shortly.
Okay. This is taking longer than expected. It's very sad. Ah, oh, Cyrus is AFK. Okay. Rip. It's a disaster. We are getting ready to go, folks. Here we go, folks. Draft one. Begins. Okay, enough of that. Ah. All right. If I don't see Deathwing main tank and Rexar offlaner from Cyrus and Cyrus's evil clone. I will riot. Alright. The overlay's good. Let's just give it a second. Yep, the overlays are good. It'll block a bit of one of the bands, though. That's unfortunate. <sighs> your guys brightwing is banned out it's weird because you know wait no what? wait why was brightwing first banned that's so weird okay anduin first pickers all right under new management is bringing out some interesting stuff cyrus picks out wreck cast memphis okay just shush it justin just just shush Uh, but yeah, so uh, Meiji Kano is playing Johanna apparently. Hogger was also banned super early by Seven Rings. I was actually really surprised that they banned Hogger and Brightwing. Goes to show just how much that team values those two heroes. Eiji Silver with the Sylvana. Wait, that's a that's only main. Why did I call it a Sylvanas? Sloth with the Dahaka. Uh. 
Tanks are getting closed more and more, but Diablo's still open. Really good on this map. Crown's Mephisto's banned out. It's pretty clear that under noob management has done their homework. Fantastic. At the very least, we'll get a good, well-researched game. <sighs> now what is Seven Rings? Pick up for their last couple of heroes. Well, actually, no, they're. No, we'll pick them. Genji. By Crown. And Root Beer Guy takes up the Stukov. Varian main tank. I haven't seen him like that will play that one before. And a Jaina. That's a double mage composition. It'll be good on wave clear. Half decent in burst team fights like picks. But its ability to clear DK is non-existent. Its ability to siege is non-existent. Under new management has basically pigeonholed themselves into winning a DK. And they're up against a Rex or in a junk crap. That's not going to happen. All right. From draft, I am deeply, deeply expecting a seven ring win from this. But I don't know. Anything's possible. Only cleanses Johanna's iron skin, and that's not really a cleanse. Lots of wombo potential off of the Lee Ming and Jaina. Uh, Synergize was really well. Banner of Dalaran. They might win a team by late game on the side of under new management, but uh, I don't think it's likely. It's gonna be tricky to stop the Genji with what they've got. And Junkrat's gonna be borderline untouchable. As long as Meiji plays correctly. They should be fine. This entirely comes down to Johanna just playing keep away with Arian and not getting picked early. <sighs> Heroes, prepare for combat. Alrighty, folks. This is game number one. We're the side of under new management. We have AG Silver, AG, or I'm just going to call them Silver because it's Argentum, Silver, Argentum. Uh, Sneaky Glades on Jaina has disconnected. This is fantastic. Alan by default is on the first pick, Anduin. Liddell is on the Varian, and Zloth is on the Dahaka. As for the side of Seven Rings, oh, I forgot to change the overlay. We have. Mejicano on Johanna. Avena Quaker on Junkrat. Dukov is played by Ripper Guy. Crown is on the Genji. Yes, this entire name is supposed to mean Crown. And Cyrus is on that Rexar, which I love watching. So yeah, let's have a good game. Um, both teams are calling ready. It, it's a fantastic. Has rejoined the battle. Overlays look nice. Battle commences and this is going to be a skirmish, but I do believe that either team can win. There's a lack Five, of crowd control four, in the hard three, form two, on the side one. of under new management. Fight but they do have a lot of burst damage and the Anduin rune. Oh. The starting bottom early. Are they? They are going immediately for the chip. This is audacious. But there's nothing there to stop them. That's a small and easy win for the side of under new management. Good play. Good play. Floss catching mid lane. Cyrus is going to rotate the catch. And a 
Zena is going to rotate as well. Might be a little overkill. Something of a misplay on Seven Rings. They have the opportunity to take way more damage top lane. It is what it is, though. Ooh, and there goes Liddell. That was fast. I honestly didn't expect them to get all that many kills off of this lineup until they scale on the side of Seven Rings. Okay, now this is one of the most gutsy proxies I've seen in a long time. Cyrus is also here. Zloth is double soaking. And Crown just goes down. Our jet divides the kill. Ooh. Debatable whether that cap was worth it. Quick and effective bruiser is coming out from Seven Rings. Meiji is basically just sitting there waiting for the globes. And Liddell is forced to clear in mid. This means that Seven Rings is going to slowly but surely develop a bit of a macro advantage. Sloth isn't going to be able to handle that. Avina is rotating to cover some of the spots that Cyrus can't get. And all the while, Liddell now has taunt. And I think the chip war is going to continue. Major Kano might actually drop here in a few seconds. No, Iron Skin has popped just in time. That's the first turret down. Avina is starting that. Oh, I think Zloth might actually drop here. Oh, nope. Zloth is going to live. Just barely. Meanwhile, your guy is doing massive damage. Speaking of which, there's a lot of talents that I haven't shown off just yet. Let's see here. One of the ones we just saw in action was Reactive Ballistic Force. Gonna be really powerful as an anti dive tool and it's gonna make Rupert guy quite dangerous. Meanwhile, that top push is probably gonna just lead it to some glades going down right now. That's an entire fort. Yeah, the Seven Rings strength of macro is really just being the big decider here. They're a team that absolutely could have entered Storm if they wanted to. You know, grab that last slot that never got filled. But. They're here in a rock. Gonna mean that they're gonna be one of the teams to beat alongside big, big push power if you're in a rock. Pit. Rings is accumulating huge advantages. And this is in a period where a variant comp should ideally be at its strongest. When the next big power spike comes on at 16. Oh, Rupier guy makes it out because of a massive peel for Meiji. Standing on the side there, making it impossible to step up. Vanilla is out of resources. They're just still faith running. Meiji's reduced to about 30% HP. Still about a cup to full. Sloth coming in with a gutsy dig. But all that's going to give is Cyrus more time to clear. This is just going to slowly become an unwinnable game if you're on the side of under new management. Huh. Yeah, the text for under new management is really big, isn't it? Going to have to fix that at some point. Oh, well. Let's see here. Snap's getting painted red by Seven Rings. Meiji is stepping up without any support network, but he's just out of range of Liddell. And it looks like they're actually going to take this fight. Don't really get anything of high impact here, but Cyrus is still consistently winning when it comes to Soak. I believe we're looking at... Uh, yeah, it's actually not in Cyrus's favor. Unless you, you know, count the stuff that comes from freaking... Ah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so a lot of this is really just coming down to the fact that Cyrus has had support from either Avina or... You know, some of the other members of Seven Rings who just go in mid lane and give him more opportunities to do something. Okay, yeah, this is just 
This is gonna be the second port down. This is a rip angle. Red team has destroyed a fort. Cyrus might get picked. So, a lot of the difference making that's happened here really comes down to how the flex DPS, both respective teams, have been behaving. And I, I think really the big difference maker at this point is the difference between Glades and Avena. Avena's been taking this slowly, been looking for soak opportunities. It's giving Cyrus a lot more free reign. It's meaning that Sloth is constantly rotating, and that Liddell has never had a chance never once to gank Cyrus. He's been too preoccupied. And with the third fort going down, and there having been no trade of similar caliber, it's, it's looking like Seven Rings is going to close this out within the next three to four minutes. We'll see. Victory is looking unattainable basically just comes down to can they or can they not on the side of under dupe management get a big fight that allows them to change things and that honestly requires one of three things avena messes up stukov messes up cyrus messes up they're never going to get on to meiji in an efficient way without getting blasted by the rest of seven rings they're playing smoothly Oh, speaking of the devil, this is looking like that misses play. It's a bit too aggro for my liking. But they've got rat traps set up. Liddell might just drop here. No? The other option was decided. Oh, there goes the pull. Yeah, it looks like Liddell's going down here in a few seconds. Ah, that's a little bit greedy on the side of Junkrat, but... There's still the safe from your guy. Orbs do not connect. I mean, they absolutely could have killed Liddell a little bit sooner. But he was looking for that multi-shot. Almost took down Silver, but denied himself the ability to easily knock Liddell into damage. guy is not in any real danger here. It just looks like it from the perspective of Liddell. This fight's rough. Okay, now that's lost here, so things might change as a good silence. Tongue lands as well, but Liddell is going to drop it a few seconds here. Yeah. Why levels, waves, ports, it all starts compounding. I don't know if Sloth could have made it there sooner, but it's just not enough with the level difference. The fire Means the Seven Rings is playing increasingly, increasingly beyond what would be their limits under normal levels. And with this Bruiser camp, they can tap up, clear the waves, use 16 to its full effect, and just blast down this keep. And honestly, though, if you're on under new management right now, you need to be very worried because you're basically one false move away from just dying. Oh my god! No! The greed! It has occurred. Wait. Oh, Avina's caught as well? Avina sneaks away with 100 HP. Bloth is chasing. Oh no, crowd! What have you done? Oh. My bro. That was so bold. Oh no. Oh boy. 
I feel like you and John coming on. There we go. It's out of the system now. Let's see here. Definitely looking for a pick, but it's just no reason for seven rings to be on that side of the map. That's the other thing that's really painful about being just kind of stuck from the behind position. You have to go places, respond to things, and try to solve problems. Meanwhile, the other guys just need to do whatever play makes things easier for them to win later down the line. So, it's a very asymmetrical when it comes to the limits of different options that both teams have. The other thing doesn't need to take this fight, but they're doing it anyways. And they're probably going to get a kill off of it, too. Ooh. Oh my word, Liddell finally goes down. He was... Fighting hard, he and Alan were just trying to keep it alive. Uh, 68 advantage is finally going to be turned off. Sneaky Glaze taking huge amounts of damage. I think Glaze just goes down. That's what Crown was trying to do last time. I think off of those two kills, seven rings could have ended. They still have three Katas. They don't get affected by the core. What else is there? Yeah. Cyrus is going to go over here, and there's basically... He can just sort of position right here with his main body, and Liddell will never get that pick. Wait. Oh. Oh, no. I did not see that flank coming. I, I don't want to be this leaving right now. And Sloth rotates in. Huge light bomb counter. Uh, Vina's in a very interesting position. Wait a minute. That's what Seven Rings doesn't want to have happen, but it doesn't matter. It's only one kill because the level difference is just so huge. Glitch finds a good pick, but at this stage of the game, they need to be winning harder than just, you know, a two for one trade out of their favor. Like, they have to be doing just a tread water. They need to be taking two members of the enemy team down for every one they lose. No combat mechanics confirmed. I say that jokingly. There are some comeback mechanics. Yeah. Looking like game one is going to go over to the side of seven rings. Like nothing wrong with the individual skills of under noob management, but they're going to need to rework their overall philosophy for how they take. Oops. For how they take things like team fights, rotations, how they manage waves. In order to be competitive with teams at the level of Seven Rings, they really need to have a sort of shift in their overall ethos. Oh yeah, like you say, Justin. Three level difference, down two keeps, DK breathing core, but before that, in order to win those kinds of fights, you're always gonna be dealing with the fact that you've got catapults pressuring, you've got a lack of vision control, that your waves are just going to be constantly crashing out of your favor. The enemy team will be taking camps faster. They'll be setting fires that you need to turn off faster. When you're behind, you don't need to just win with a one kill difference. You need to win with like a two or three kill difference in order to actually start stabilizing. And those kills need to be on people who actually aren't important for the enemy team's ability to defend. Like, if you get, say, for instance, the Bruiser in the tank, uh, yeah, you, you still kind of really can't start a push because the enemy team can just defend from under walls. Like, you really need to swing a huge way. 
Justin, I don't even know what level your team is on. Like, I actually have no idea what level of power you have. Like, you've got good players, but... I feel like... You know, uh, retiring? Isn't that why you like your, the retirement squad? Anyway, Seven Rings is taking us to Battlefield of Eternity. Let me get that on the board right now. Lamb. Yeah. So, this is interesting for me when it comes to Seven Rings decision making. Like, it, it's basically, they are screaming. In, in taking this map, they are screaming at under new management. We believe our offlaner can beat your offlaner in a duel. Like, that that is what they are saying by going to Battlefield Eternity. And it's also a, we believe that Crown will be able to beat your mage players. Like, for a team that basically won that game off a couple of lane management rotations early game, this seems crazy crazy to me that Seven Rings is deciding to go to this map. Like, it's a totally opposite playstyle of what they just won with. Oh, well. <coughs> we'll see. I haven't seen them play Battlefield Eternity since I think they pushed power during the open season last time around. Don't quote me on that, though. I don't remember things that far back. All right, let's see here. Wait, Rupier guy is the one banning. That's interesting. I'm pretty certain that's not how they normally do it. Oh, Hanzo's been banned out. Who plays that on uh, Hunter New Management? They've got one good Hanzo player. I don't remember. see here. Once again, Hogger's banned out early. I guess that means Loth plays it. Blaze is banned out. I, I I don't think I see Cyrus playing Blaze this early, though. Nice work, Vena. Your Junkrat was that terrifying. Huh. And Crown pinks up the Lee Ming early. That's pretty bonkers. Wait a minute. I just realized I engaged in false information in the loading screen. This was not a pick from a uh, freaking Seven Rings. This was actually a pick from s For the, alliance of the side of under new management, which explains why they took this map, because it's a team fight oriented map, and that's what will help them win against the team that can now rotate them. Duh! Okay, I, I feel really daft now. Like, super daft now. I'm gonna have to fix that. Oh! That's an early new pick. Ah, I feel so daft! I'm engaged in misinformation. I will fight to my last breath. 
And we see the Rhaegar pick from Rapier Guy. Huh. That's kind of early in it. And Deathwing banned out. Okay, that's a Cyrus target ban. That's pretty nifty. Under new management has definitely done their homework. Although Cyrus has like 10 different picks from this position. He'll be fine. Tank pull's getting eh, narrowed. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the variant again. Oh, we're seeing the Garrosh this time around. Okay, this is sure as hell a composition that they can win with. Oh god, it's this again. No, Melganus offlaner doesn't work. I, 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 I hate this. I don't believe in the Melganus offlane. And... Oh, wait, what? Was that a Tassin, our last pick? Oh, that's a phoenix. What? Uh, I, should, I should just go screaming on my pillow. <sighs> I swear, this feels like it's gonna be one of those games. That's a double hyper carry. That's kind of weird, but Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give this one preemptively to uh, the side of Underdoop Management. I hate their draft slightly less. I, I can't use positive language to describe this situation, to be honest. Because I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at. Anyways, with the side of our new management, we have Zloth on the Sonya, Alan by default on the Anduin again, Argentum is on the Zul'jin, Glades is on the Vala, and Liddell is on the uh, freaking Garrosh. As for the crew of Seven Rings, we've got Rupert Guy and Raycar, Crown on Lee Ming, and we need a quick run Phoenix. He looks like he's preparing to do some W swaps. Mijikano's on a new Barak, and Cyrus is on. Now, I'm, I I don't know what this is. I don't know how they win with this. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> My mentals are abolished. If clear prior just immediately goes to seven rings. This is this is the great curse of the O Beijikado. Makes it out with a second to spare. Whew. Bunkers. Oh, Avina is going top immediately to do that camp. It's as you predicted, Justin. We're looking at a split. This is good. Means that Seven Rings is going to be able to out clear and probably out push at the same time. 
Not that, you know, I'm used to Fleming's doing that. That's actually kind of insane. Mm. AG, what you doing? The 4v1? Okay, he's fine. Yeah. I don't know who wins this race, honestly. I feel like it's Seven Rings, though. They got their camp out slightly faster. And Crown can save clear. Even if they do take a little bit of chip in the end. Ooh, Silver loses a third of their HP. Glades is rotated up. Towers are already super chipped. Meanwhile, we are seeing uh, very little progress being made bot side. Sloth's taking a lot of damage. That's a tower down. Yeah, that level four is coming out. It's pretty standard Li Ming. Both teams are doing the camp a little bit early, which is how you're supposed to do it anyways. Phoenix is taken hard acquired. I don't know what that talent does, to be honest. That's thirst for battle, I'm... I am somewhat questioning the lack of indomitability, but you do you, man, I guess. I don't know. Being unstoppable is the best thing that a tank can be. Doesn't quite get the throw. This clear is happening pretty efficiently. Meanwhile, I think Zloth's going to have more trouble. I don't really know how Malganis is going to win. But, at the same time though. That camp's still there and, oh. Crown goes down. That is not who I expected to die first. Consider me a little bit surprised. It's going to give the crew on under new management a huge window to just push for free. Oh, Major Kano is also dead now. Okay, the death spiral has begun. Pretty certain Seven Rings. Isn't gonna make it to 20 this game. But hey, at least I've got a tank to fight here. Into the two stackers. Oh, Dell gets pulled. Ravina almost finds the pick. And Crown is the one sent to race. That's pretty bunkers. Meiji is thrown. Liddell is actually going to drop here. Oh, no. Crown's back. Ah. This is going to take so long. They're going to have to kill Crown like five times. Wait, Liddell five times before Crown finishes the race. Oh, Meiji's probably going to drop in a few seconds. Definitely gonna drop in a few seconds. But with Cyrus here to zone outside of under new management, they might have enough time to do this. No, no way. Avina goes down. Oh, this is actually gonna be so much closer than I was expecting. Oh, no. It's an un. Horrible <laughs> disaster! <laughs> oh no! And Crown's next on the shopping block! Oh no! I know, right, Whisper? Like, yeah! Yeah, both of these cops! Both of these cops make me cry a little. <laughs> But hey, at least I get more ad revenue. Oh no, how are we actually doing on the stackers? 13 stacks on the ball up. That's Q builds old gen. It's a way less stack in Mathon than I thought. Wait, what the? Cyrus? Cyrus has black claws. Aw oh, yeah! He can outdo a little sloth now. That's pretty epic. Wait. They're just standing there. 
Menacingly. What? I... What are these rotations? I don't even know. Crowd goes into get down again. Lavina is probably going to be able to escape. Oh man. Oh man. That's why you never face check a bush, even if it's on a safe path to retreat. Ha 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 ha. Meanwhile, Sloth's taking that trade ski. Wait, is that Planet Cracker? That is Planet Cracker. What? Meanwhile, Osiris and Sloth. He's getting to see who can get into the lane first. What is this? Meiji's getting blasted. Ooh, that's huge damage. And pulls down. And the unkillable's down, and Zloth just goes in. Crown makes it out, though. Cyrus slips away, Venus slips away. Yeah, I think seven rings. Is... Don't be mean, Whisper. Otherwise, they'll have to report you to the disciplinary committee. Oh man, Major Connor with a huge flank. The bell taking massive damage. And yeah, I, I think it's going to be the second immortal over to seven rings. Still super low, the sleep is in, the CC chain is massive, and AG Silver goes down. Oh! The synergy between AG Cyrus and Crown in that last fight. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, Whisper, you're funny. The demon approaches the gates of heaven. Oh boy. Yeah, that's gonna be first fork down to the favor of Seven Rings. He goes straight onto it thanks to the early cheese we saw like in thanks to a Venus swap. But it was not cheese, it was just a rotation. Even on a two-lane map, Seven Rings is really just making huge difference with rotations. Oh! That's two dead men. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see a game three after that. Sloth's responding, but it's probably too late. We are going to be done. Wait a minute. I, I just remember the Seven Rings team comp doesn't have that much burn. I don't think they can end here. Oh, Rupier Guy's definitely dead. Right? Yes, there we go. There goes Meiji. Okay. So, Seven Rings is like one or two team fights away from winning the game now. Like, if they get a get a three kill difference in a team fight they just outright win but beyond that we're gonna be able to get the fort in this lane so it's not all bad 
but they have no one responding to bot side, which means crown and maybe they're gonna get this for free. Oh, I think Cyrus is just gonna get eaten alive. Never mind, he has 50 armor, he's indestructible. He absorbs literally. Oh no, the anti synergy! Oh no! So, for those that missed it, we got the pull from Anduin, but at the same time, Liddell threw the pull target, which overrid the pull. Which meant that poor innocent Sonya didn't actually go to safety and just went somewhere else. It's a disaster. I mean, Seven Rings is going to be even more primed to win this next objective. And then just take it to core. I mean, I mean, Justin, Justin, Justin. He absorbed, like, all of the burst damage all at once and kind of just sat there that's a two for one you take that every day using your semi hard skin oh Lena sneaks away the bills gonna be the first to drop here maybe no yes sloth falls just a few seconds later AZ silver is in cocoon which means his suffering shall be extended to the end of the universe. And that's game number two. Seven Rings is gonna win this. GG. Also died. Crown's gonna make it out somehow. Need a straight skiing. Pull is used. The totem is big. The unkillable is out. Vina doesn't quite get the kill. Stinky Glades goes in on Avina but doesn't quite connect. Preemptive call from Liddell, but to be honest, I think he was right to call it there. But yeah, so that's win number two for Seven Rings. They have the oh oh whisper whisper whisper. I'm definitely gonna have to report you to the DC now. Anyway, just for the record, this map. We see right here, it shouldn't be red, it should be blue. This was a pick as taken by Umber under new management. Now, the lesson from this game, and I want to go back to the stats briefly, is what makes a strong team? Sure, it's the skills as well. As all of your little bit of micro, your ability to understand how team fights work, there's whole elements there that are really important, but. Rotations, coordination, those things are worth their weight in gold. You cannot simply leave your offlaner 
alone and expect to deliver superior results with a four man. Because think about it like this. Which is the bigger difference? A two man push going up against each other? Or a 3v4 push going against each other? Just a 3v. The, the point simply is this. Help your offlaners. Go for opportunities for chip. Take camps. Make the other guy's life miserable. Your team will thank you. And with that, I think I am going to probably go to bed. Thank you all for watching. Better luck next time to Under Noob Management. And congratulations to Seven Rings.